You're very welcome back to Sunday AM. Now, as we've been hearing, the World Irish Dancing Championships are celebrating their 47th year this year. And with entries from all over the globe, it seems Irish dancing is more popular than ever. Indeed. Let's join Laura again, who's live at the City West Hotel in Dublin for the final day of the competition. Laura. Hi, Laura. Ian, I'm usually surrounded by talented people on Sunday AM, but today there are some superbly talented uh, men and women, boys and girls, competing here at the World Irish uh, Dancing Championships. I've got Esther Bromley with me now from the Tara School of Dance in Italy, no less, and they are her students you just saw dancing there. Good morning to you, Esther. Good morning to you. Thank you for asking me to come along to speak to you. Tell me when you started dancing and how you ended up teaching in Italy. I started dancing when I was about eight and I started dancing in the Irish Centre in Corby in the middle of England. Okay. Um, when I finished university, I went to Italy. I thought I'd do something different for a year and ended up staying there. I moved there in 88. Okay. I've been there ever since. Fell in love. Fell in love, obviously, um, and was able to continue dancing in Italy. First of all, performing with a band, and then people saw me. River dance was becoming more popular, and people wanted to be involved in Irish dance, so asked me to teach. At the time, it was mainly adults, Okay, and that's really how the school started, right. and that was in the early 90s. Isn't that funny how adults were sort of interested in learning how to dance as some extracurricular activity and they weren't putting their children in first? That's, it. that's exactly it, and it was very, very strange for a number of years. Adults didn't even realise that children danced. It was only when we brought them to competitions and said, look, this is what it's all about, is the children... They didn't realise that all those people in river dance started as children. Well, this is it, and, and as you had yourself, because, of course, your parents were, were Irish. But I was chatting earlier on to Seamus and Anya O'Shea, and they were saying that, you know, there was such huge interest in Irish dancing across the world way before river dance anyway. But it did modernise it. There was an evolution of sorts in the 90s. Totally agree. I totally agree. And I think one of the, the things that I love about Irish dancing is that it's not... It's traditional, but it's not stuck in tradition. It changes and it moves along, even though the basics are still there. So you have the traditional part, the, the feet, the legs, the body quite straight for competition. Um, but every year, teachers invent new moves and it becomes even more beautiful and more interesting. So it's a real honour for your students to come to the World Dance Championships here for the week. Very much an honour, very much an honour. They enjoy it, they enjoy themselves. They love every second every second so it's very competitive but they get a lot out of it i mean not to, you know physically the posture the confidence i suppose to the mobility but also psychologically it's not easy getting up on that stage with those adjudicators that's the worst stage in the whole world to get in front of but they did it today and they enjoyed it and they will come out of it having learned something very very important esther it's been a pleasure chatting to you this morning and the best of luck in the continuation of your school back in milan now okay thank you very thank much you, and goodbye bye bye oh i also want to chat to this gentleman here this is Gavin Doherty, responsible for some of the most beautiful costumes I've ever seen. You have dancers on stage. Um, yeah. When did you get this interest in, in um, sewing well, and I making danced, these? I danced when I was, well, started when I was three. My mum also made Irish dancing costumes um, a long time ago. Um, I, when I was about ten, I had started drawing what it was a long time ago. You know, it was all done by hand. Um, I used to draw the Celtic designs on the costumes. My mum used to embroider it. Someone else would have made it. Um, I was doing a degree in math, statistics and computers and just realised I thought I couldn't do this the rest of my life. And right, From maths to sewing yeah, and yeah, creating yeah, these so, beautiful... Yeah, so I was obviously trained by my mother um, and it just sort of evolved from that. Um, so talk to me about the evolution of the costumes because I can see some today are very traditional and then some, like yours, they're quite decadent, they're sexy, there's all sorts of applique and embellishments on them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of the costumes you're looking at today are for teams. Um, these would be costumes that would have been worn during the start, well, all of, during the week for solo competitions. Um, so talk to us about this one we're seeing here with this the year, I, colours. Uh, this year, with some of the skirts, I went asymmetrical, um, just trying to do something a bit different. We were always trying to be innovative, looking for you know fabrics, laces, um, um, just yeah, it's really just trying to stay ahead of the game. Can we have a look at this one down here? Look at the intricate design. I mean, you see the lace on the catwalks, obviously not with yeah. all of the applique and all of the diamonds on as well. How much are we talking price-wise for one of these? For something like this, you're talking around about anywhere between a thousand and fourteen hundred sterling, um, plus then 
crystals on top of that. Um, That's a huge amount of money for one frock. How long do the dancers wear it? Do they um, have it for years? Typically, a dancer would have it for a year, and then most dancers would sell it on and get quite you know most of their money back to, in order to get a new one. To get a new one. And is there sort of style and trends the way there would be in, in mainstream fashion? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, we're always looking on the, the catwalk to see what's what's new and different. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's anything. I mean, this this particular dress came about because we had a we had a party. The dancer had walked into the I, I teach as well, and the dancer had walked into the party wearing a lace top and a black skirt. It looked fabulous. And I'm like, right, that's what that's what you're going in for the world championships. And it, it was it really was how that one came about. That's it was, so cool. It was fantastic. How do you feel when you see your dancers on stage doing their job, looking sensational? Well, one of your always, designs at this time of year, it's it's always nerve wracking because you know you're trying new things and you you know you don't know if it's going to work when it gets on stage. So it's, you know, it is such. It's always, it's, it is a relief when you go up and it's it, you know it gets a bit of hype around it. I can imagine so. And in terms of you know comfort, because they are twirling and swirling. I mean, comfort yeah, is key. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's just to have the dress fitted so it doesn't move while they're dancing. You know, um, it's also you know different body shapes will suit different different designs as well. They're almost you know artistic. You want to frame them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, my my own niece has won the world championships twice. We haven't sold any of her dresses. We just keep them as she as she's going along. So she'll love that when she's yeah, older to look yeah, back yeah, on them. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Emil, for taking the time no to talk to us today. I know you've been really busy and uh, you've yeah. had dancers on stage. Yeah. It's almost yeah. the end. Have you had a good week? Yeah, fantastic. We had six world champions as a, as a school as well, which was, uh, you know, mind-blowing. Six um, were all wearing your stuff, I presume. Well, my own dancers wearing my stuff, and then there was all, obviously other world champions wearing our stuff at one as well, but it was my own, yeah, my own dancers as well. Good week for you, Gavin. Yeah, well, we'll be doing a lot of partying when we go back to Belfast. A lot so. of partying, a lot of Easter eggs as well yep, today. Absolutely. Let's break out the chocolate. Yep. I haven't been able to eat any of this dress, but all that's going to change in a couple of minutes. Gavin, pleasure to chat to you, you today. Too. Thank you.